Okay, impromptu uh, thing today. We've arrived here at the warehouse, and the plan is to unearth the Frontier V6 right here, and we're going to run around in it a little bit. And the reason for that is we're gonna be using this thing up on the mountain here, uh, probably later this week sometime. And the way lead acid batteries usually work, at least the ones they have in mobility, mo bleh, at least the ones in mobility chairs, when they sit around for a while, they tend to lose a little bit of capacity out of a black for a better term. And it takes a couple of cycles to get the capacity back up again. Now, I understand that everything is garbage and charging batteries is bad and blah, 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 whatever. I'm just sharing what I normally do in this situation and what seems to work. And I know there's a few other people out there that I've chatted with that have similar experiences. So what we're gonna do to prepare for using that thing later this week is I'm gonna hop in it and we're gonna run around for maybe two to four miles, something like that. Maybe not even that far, just enough to get the batteries discharged a little bit. Then we're gonna plug it in overnight so it gets a good solid charge. Then tomorrow when I come back out here again for the live stream, I'm gonna run it again, plug it in again overnight, and then we'll have a couple of cycles, albeit not super deep ones, but a couple of cycles on the batteries. And then when we get ready to use the thing later on in the week, we should be good. Well, the question is, can we extract this thing from the row without moving a whole bunch of chairs? And I think the answer to that is no. <laughs> so let's get some other stuff moved out of the way here. I've been out here going through stuff and taking trips with garbage to various places and uh, kind of consolidating a little bit. Let's see, can I pull this thing? Uh, oh yeah, there we go. A little one-handed action there. And I'm driving my chair with my, with my elbow here. Oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. oh, other stuff behind me. And then we have the old Pulse 6 here, AKA the salsa in some other countries. It's uh, an okay chair and simultaneously pretty terrible at the same time. These things have issues with the bolts and stuff literally falling off of them. Actually, I was moving it in here a couple days ago and some random bits fell off the suspension. <laughs> uh, let's see if the C300 will power up. I don't, okay, yeah. Looks like I left the batteries connected. Okay. Ooh, I don't think I've charged this thing in a few months. So we might not actually go super far in this thing. This thing also has all air filled tires. So I know the caster wheels tend to lose their pressure. So we're gonna fire up the air compressor get those topped off real quick. I just remembered that I've got the Odyssey Extreme AGM batteries in here and the battery gauge does not respond uh, like it does with other batteries, other brands that are in here. It always measures a little bit low. So I'm not too concerned about that, but let me get some stuff moved and we'll get the air compressor fired up. Okay, air compressor. I'm uh, getting the blue van all cleaned up and uh, ready to sell. And for some reason, the carpet's a little bit dirty in there, so we'll have to, uh, have to deal with that. All right, shield your ear holes. Now, these particular Kenda tires are from ultralight aircraft landing gear, and they're rated for 50 PSI. I normally run about 30 in them just for ride quality, but we're going to pump them up all the way since I know they're going to be leaking down. Uh, let's get that on there. Come on. Sometimes these little clip-on valve stems are nice, and other times they're not so much. There we go. So I'll run that up to what this gauge says is 50. As I recall, I have several of these Harbor Freight gauges, and one of them is correct and one is not, so I don't know. And these tires I set at about 25. Just to be clear, these are not stock tires or tubes. It says on the wheel like 48 PSI or something like that. But these are 
what are these? Four ply steel belted radials. Okay, we got all the tires aired up. Now this one, a long time ago, I upgraded to 120 amp controller, which gives these motors a little bit more grunt and also helps them run a little bit more efficient, efficiently. And we've got a gyro back here. This is a standard RNET one, single axis, but we're running it in a passive mode, hence the red light, just for kind of some backup safety. Does not affect the steering performance in any way, well, the way I'm running it. But if I catch a tire on a curb or some dirt or something like that and the chair tries to spin around, that thing will stop me. So that's why that's on there. If it was running in active mode, that light would be green. But as I found out through all my testing years ago, when that red light is on and the joystick is connected through it, it does still have some basic functionality. Okay, we are all suited up in this thing now. Got the tires installed. Blew some dust off of it. And I think we're good. So let's go find a spot to run this thing. Actually, before I forget, let's uh, reset our trip meter here. How many miles are on this? So it's about 100 miles more than what that says when we change the controller out. So about 1,260 miles on this thing, which isn't too bad. Oh, and we have lights. Forgot about that. I don't think I showed upgrading to this style here. These are some ones on Amazon that I recommend. I had some different style ones on here before, but then I've got some side lights and then also some lights here on the back. I installed those in a video a long time ago. I busted out my seamstress skills and uh, actually sewed those to the back of the chair. So it's nice, uh, nice having some light up a little bit higher there, but it's pretty much dark outside. So we'll see what we do. What we do, where we go, I don't know. Let's go outside. Mm. This trip might be a little bit shorter than we planned. I'm not getting 6.5 miles an hour and it's feeling a little bit sluggish. So yeah, we'll run around a little bit and see what happens. All right, here we are on a random trail. And we're down the hill here and see what happens. These motors do still make weird noises though. Not just the whining, but there's this weird crunching. Yeah, looks like it flooded down here. Uh, that's a lot of mud. Hmm. Well, let's see, I didn't really want to get the tires all muddy, but whatever. Okay, mud cleared up here. I've also found when going down these paths, especially with these headlights, people tend to flip out and think you're on an ATV or something. <laughs> Maybe we're doing all right. We're getting 6.2, 6.3 miles an hour. I don't remember on this chair. I swear 6.5 is the speed it went. But, um, I mean, the motors sound like they always have historically. And I'm pulling up hills just fine, and the battery is staying pretty stable. So, yeah, I don't know. Might be all right. Uh, let's see here. I guess we'll go down here. There's some hills. Big old steel deck bridge. And I think we're gonna head sort of back. I believe this goes to another bridge over here. We've only gone uh, 0.6 miles so far, but I'd rather not get stranded out here. It's not super warm. Oh, that's right. This doesn't go anywhere useful. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna head back. We're, uh, we're down to one yellow doesn't usually take too much. I just want to knock a little bit of the charge off the top of the batteries. Usually seems to help when you're charging them up after they haven't been used for a while. There's one thing I like about this chair is the, the turning performance is really good. This is extremely rough right here. I still haven't fixed the loose seating on this thing. It's been that way for at least six years now. Ooh, there's some bumps. Not 
not a problem for this thing, of course. But yeah, there's uh, at least the rattle with the seating is something I do need to fix. It's The actual fix is fairly easy. I just need to squeeze the two seat track rails together, but I have to completely remove the seating and take apart the, um, uh, the tilt mechanism to do that. And I've been putting it off for quite some time. deep is this? Oh yeah, we're fine. A little wheel washing action there. Oh, we got one yellow bar back. There's that other bridge that I'm not sure how you get to. Well, obviously it's right there, but from the other way. Yeah, we've gone almost a mile now and we got, oh, sorry, wobbly. We've gotten one yellow bar back. I don't think I want to go near the road, seeing as how it's like rush hour. So let's cruise up here by the police station. Looks like they got a big Christmas tree up there. Okay, we're holding pretty good speed. This is a really steep hill, five miles an hour. Oh look, it's a Christmas tree. It was sort of lazily decorated. <laughs> yeah, we've crossed the one mile mark. I think we're just going to head back. We'll call that good. Okay, we have returned. Yeah, so I keep the warehouse at about 50 degrees, which I figure isn't too cold to annoy batteries too much. They'll they're warm enough to work okay and charge and be all right, and it keeps everything from freezing in here. I could probably go a little bit less, but I like to have a bit of a buffer since we have a concrete slab and this place is not insulated very well. They claim the ceiling is insulated, but you can see daylight through the big roll-up door. So, anyways. We went 1.3 miles. We've got a single yellow left. So I think I'm gonna hop back into the F3, and then I'm gonna stick a voltmeter in here and see what our voltage is at just for no reason. Okay, we have a voltometer here. Set this thing to DC volts. Uh, I can't remember if this is the meter that's screwed up or not, but we'll see. The probes on this one are pre-bent for our convenience, so it makes it a lot easier to measure the voltage on a power chair. And it appears as though we are at 23.74 volts. So yeah, that, uh, that kind of lines up with what our gauge says. We got one yellow back. Let's turn on our lights and see what our drop goes down to. That's about a one amp load. So yeah, they are getting kind of low. Actually, it's about 1.2 amps, I believe, for all the lights. All right, cool. Well, seems to be a chair. Let's plug it into charge. So I'm using one of the uh, five mode permobile chargers there. Let me grab my other phone real quick. It's plugged into a smart socket. That can, um, that can read the wattage. I, I wanna see what it is right when we first plug it in. We've got our app opened up here, and you can see down there at the bottom, we're pulling less than two watts. So let's plug this in. Actually, we'll turn it off, plug it in, wait for the charger to engage. There we go, and it's showing the very bottom bar, which is good. When batteries start to go bad, the charger indicator will show a lot higher. It usually takes us a minute to update. We wanna see like 300, 350 watts, somewhere in there. Hmm, we're only pulling 170 watts, but if the batteries are really low, the charger might be ramping up a little bit before it actually gets to blasting the full eight amps in there. But with that charger, it's around, uh, usually between 300 and 350 watts pulling from the wall when it's actually putting out eight amps. So we'll leave this for a little bit and uh, see what happens. Oh, another thing to note, that charger is temperature compensated and it is sitting on the concrete floor and it's gonna be the same temperature as these batteries since it's all in the same you know, place basically. But uh, okay, there we go, we're up to 231 now. Looks like this thing's just not updating the way it should. Refresh. All right, we'll check in in a little bit. While we're waiting for that charger to percolate, we are going to empty out this vacuum cleaner and actually it seems pretty empty. I'll have to go outside and knock out the filter, but uh, 
We're gonna use this to vacuum out the inside of the blue van. Okay, we've got this thing all vacuumed out now. I don't know what it is with this camera, but it makes it look like it's extremely filthy in here when it's not. I don't really understand that. And I know there's one person watching that rides in this van regularly and you can attest to that. The carpet doesn't actually look that way, but for whatever reason, the camera just makes it look like horrific. Um, anyways, it's vacuumed in here now, yay. Okay, let's check back in with our charging situation here. We'll refresh this. I don't know what's up with Wemo, but they are not very reliable anymore. Let's see, Permobile charger. We're at 236 watts, so that's fine. The lights on the charger have gone up uh, one notch from the bottom, which is fine. Uh, can't really detect any heat there. But with the temperature compensation, with the temperature compensated charging, I think that's fine. So we'll just leave this thing overnight and uh, should be good. All right, I think that pretty much wraps everything up. I got a couple of orders packed. I'm gonna ship those out as soon as I leave here. But uh, yeah, that chair is over there charging and should be ready to use in the snow later this week. Should be a lot of fun. Of course, there'll be a video about it. Thanks for watching.